Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Bubby's Brisket, an adaptation of a modern parable written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Bubby's Brisket. One day after school, Julia walked home from the bus stop and threw open the front door. I'm home, she shouted, and then she paused in the doorway. She raised her nose and sniffed once, twice, and then her eyes lit up. She could smell garlic sautéing in butter, fresh-cut onions, tomato paste. She ran into the kitchen. You're making Bubby's brisket, she said. Dad laughed. He was standing at the kitchen counter, ingredients fresh by his side, a pan of garlic beginning to turn golden on the stovetop. You're just in time, Dad said. I've been craving this brisket, so I thought we'd have it for dinner tonight. Awesome, Julia said. Anything I can help with? Absolutely, Dad said, and he slid the compost bucket towards her with his foot. You can peel all the carrots into this. Okay, Julia said. She took up the vegetable peeler and got to work on the carrots. On the counter, her dad took the brisket and began to rub it with spices. The brisket was a huge hunk of meat for roasting, thick on one end and tapering down to a point on the other. As soon as the salt and pepper and thyme hit it, Julia's mouth started to water. Her dad laid the brisket out on a cutting board and took out his biggest kitchen knife. Working with practiced hands, he cut a few inches off the point end of the brisket and then another couple inches off the fat end, leaving just the middle hunk of meat. There we go, he said. One perfect brisket ready for the oven. Julia furrowed her brow. She had never seen that step before. It was only in the past year or so that she'd really gotten into cooking and helping with the prep. Dad, she asked, why do you cut the sides off the brisket? That looks like good meat, isn't it? Dad shrugged. That's the way your bubby always did it. It's part of the secret recipe. But why, though? Julia asked. She really didn't understand why you would throw away big slices of good brisket. In her mind, the more brisket, the better. They finished the recipe, and about three hours later, Julia had a huge slice of brisket alongside some small potatoes and a mixed salad her mom had made. They all agreed it was absolutely perfectly juicy and delicious, but the mystery of the cut sides still nagged at Julia's mind. She thought about it a time or two again that week, but then mostly forgot until they went to visit her bubby that weekend. They pulled into her driveway, and she was out front to greet them, wearing her favorite sweater, even in the summer heat. Bubby, Julia said, running out of the car and into her grandmother's arms. Julia, look how big you are. What have you been eating? Well, we actually made your brisket this week, and I've been eating the leftovers just about every day. Well, I'm glad you like it. Bubby said, leading them all into her house. Has your father started teaching you the recipe yet? It's an old family secret, so make sure you keep it to yourself, she added with a wink. Julia smiled, and they went into the house. Bubby got them drinks and brought out some food, and they were all chatting, and the question bubbled up in Julia's mind again. Bubby, she said, I do have one question about the secret family brisket recipe. Of course, Bubby said. I can write it down for you, but you have to memorize it and then eat the paper so it doesn't fall into enemy hands. They both laughed, and Julia asked, I was just wondering, why do we cut the ends off the brisket? I mean, it's already been trimmed at the butcher, right? Aren't we just getting rid of good meat? And when I say good, I mean the best. Like, don't we want all of the brisket? It's a part of the recipe, Bubby said with a shrug. It's how my mother always did it. She said it's part of the secret recipe, and I never dared to question the secret recipe. Oh, that makes sense, said Julia. But it didn't. Not really. The whole week she thought about why cutting off the ends would make for a better brisket, 
but she couldn't come up with anything. She even got on the computer with her mom, and they googled around a hundred different recipe sites, and not a single one recommended cutting off both ends before roasting. Thankfully, a week later, they went to visit her uncle Saul. Bubby's mother, who Julia playfully called Great Bubby, lived with him in a little apartment on the first floor. Julia barely said hello to her uncle before she was at Great Bubby's door, knocking hard and loud, since Great Bubby didn't hear so well. Julia, she said when she opened the door. What a lovely surprise. Julia gave her a hug and helped her over to the couch. Great Bubby, she said. You taught Bubby the family brisket recipe, right? And she taught my dad, and he taught me. Best brisket around, Great Bubby said, beaming. I was wondering if you could explain part of the recipe. Well, of course, but if I write it down, you'll have to eat the paper so it doesn't fall into enemy hands. Julia smiled, realizing Bubby must have gotten that joke from her own mom. Well, I was just wondering why we cut either end off of the brisket before we cook it. I looked online, and some people cut off the point or separate the fat and other stuff, but no one trims a chunk off both ends. It doesn't make any sense to me. Why in the world do we do that? Great Bubby smiled and shrugged. It's how my mother taught me. We've been making it that way since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Did she ever say why she cut the ends off? Julia asked, getting a little exasperated now. She didn't, said Great Bubby, and I never asked. I just assume it's a part of the magic of the brisket. I guess so, said Julia, but it still didn't make any sense. Every other step had a purpose. Salt and pepper and thyme for flavor, wine and broth and tomatoes for acidity and liquid for the meat to bake and baste in, Carrots and onions and other veggies for the depth of flavors and for a side to eat with the meal. But cutting off two good ends? Wasting meat? It made no sense! The next day, Julia went to her dad, determined. Dad, can I go with you to visit Great Great Booby in the nursing home? Whoa, said Dad, laughing. Since when do you want to go there? Last time I made you come with me, you said it smelled like old people in turpentine. Well, I was younger then, and that wasn't really very nice. But I want to go with you this week. Can I? Sure, said Dad. But I don't want to hear any complaints about the smell, deal? Deal, said Julia. That Thursday evening, they drove across town to where Julia's Bubby's Bubby lived. She was just over a hundred years old, frail and slow, but still as sharp as ever upstairs. She smiled and sat up a little in her bed when Julia and her dad came in. She asked about a hundred questions about Julia's school and friends and all that and got updates on the rest of the family from dad. Finally, after all the news was shared and the small talk was finished and Julia thought she would pop if she waited any longer, she asked Great Great Booby the question. So, about the family brisket recipe, she said. Great Great Bubby smiled. Oh, our family secret, she said with a dry little laugh. I invented that recipe probably 80 years ago, and we haven't had to change it since. Did your dad teach you? Just make sure if you write it down, you eat the paper. We can't have it falling into enemy hands. Julia laughed and then smiled. It was nice to hear the joke again. But even better was that Great Great Booby had invented the recipe. Surely she would be able to solve the mystery of the cut ends. Oh, I know the recipe, Julia said. I was just wondering, why do we cut off the ends of the brisket? Isn't that good meat? Great Great Booby looked at her confused for a long moment, and then she burst out into laughter. When she laughed, she seemed 50 years younger. Strong and happy, eyes shining. Oh, are you really still doing that? Of course, said Dad. Alta Bubby, it's your recipe. We haven't changed a thing. The old woman kept laughing and finally shook her head. Oh, you sweet darlings. 
When I was teaching my daughter, we only had a small oven and one small pan. I cut off the sides because if I didn't, the brisket wouldn't fit. Julia looked at her great-great booby with wide eyes. So we are just wasting meat. That was never really part of the recipe at all. Oh, sorry, honey, she said. Julia glared at her dad for a moment, and then they all started laughing again. And that week, Julia made her great-great boobies brisket again in their big modern oven, this time leaving on the ends. Of course, it was just as delicious as ever. The End Thanks for listening. 